I'm not ashamed. What offerings were made in order to dedicate the altar? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Numbers on walking through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Numbers chapter 7. We're going to be reading from verses 10 to 17. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Numbers chapter 7, beginning of verse 10. Now the leaders offered the dedication offering for the altar when it was anointed. So the leaders offered their offering before the altar. For the Lord said to Moses, They shall offer their offering one leader each day for the dedication of the altar. And the one who offered his offering on the first day was Nashon, the son of Aminadab, from the tribe of Judah. His offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, and one silver bowl of 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, one gold pan of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering. One kid of the goats is a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of the peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs in the first year. This was the offering of Nashon, the son of Aminadab. In our last lesson, we discussed the offering for the Levites that the leaders in Israel gave, and that was six ox carts along with twelve oxen. These items would be useful to the Levites when the tabernacle was being transported through the wilderness. As such, the Gershonites and the Merarites received the ox carts and oxen according to their need, which the sons of Merari received more due to their greater need in carrying heavier things, while the Kohathites received none, because they bore the holy things of the tabernacle on their shoulders and thus would not use ox carts. Coming out of verse 10, we come to a different offering, one which each tribe would make, an offering of dedication for the altar after it was anointed. Like with verses 1 and 2, the timing of this offering can be confusing. The altar was anointed and sanctified on the first day of the first month, the second year after the exodus from Egypt. Was this offering, which took 12 days to complete, since each tribe had an offering, made at that time, or was it like the offering to the Levites, which took place about a month later? And to tell you the truth, unlike with the language in verse 2, the language used in verse 10 is a bit more ambiguous. No, u- no use of the word numbering is used here, so to necessarily affix this to the time after the census can't be done. The leaders in Israel were the leaders before the census, for Numbers 1 made it clear that they assisted Moses and Aaron in the census. It would make sense, since this was a dedication offering, that it would happen soon after the anointing of the altar, though nothing would mean that it had to be done right after that. For we know from Leviticus 8 and 9 that the consecration sacrifices for the priests were made first, which took a week, and then after that the first sacrifices were offered. Thus it would seem to place this offering somewhere after those sacrifices, but before the census, and offerings made earlier in the chapter, though I'm not going to be dogmatic on this, because the chapter doesn't say one way or another. If you scan through the chapter, you're going to notice that it has 89 verses. Due to copyright issues with the New King James Version, only a certain amount of text is to, be able to show, is to be able to be shown visually on the screen without breaking copyright law. The amount is related to the number of words of each podcast. This constraint, as well as my determination to actually read and study each verse in our walk through the Bible, is going to present us with some repetition here, for it will take six more lessons after this to complete the chapter. Each tribe is going to offer sacrifices, one set of sacrifices for each tribe. And the way it was done is that one tribe would be assigned a day to offer these sacrifices, meaning the process took 12 days to complete. Why such a drawn-out process? Remember, there were only three priests because Nadab and Abihu were killed soon after the altar was consecrated. Thus, it was going to take the priests quite a bit of time to properly offer these sacrifices, especially since they were new to doing this. So in order to lighten their workload, that is a possible reason as to why this took so long. The offering itself, as we said earlier, was an offering of dedication. The altar had been dedicated already when it was consecrated by Moses. However, it could also be dedicated another way through the free will offerings of gifts on the altar. The order that the tribes offered their sacrifices is not random. We start with the first camp, the camp of, the camp of Judah, 
then move around the camp to the camp of Reuben, then the camp of Ephraim, followed lastly by the camp of Dan. Judah was the leader of his camp, so he went first on the first day. His offering was offered by Nashon, the son of Amminadab, both of which are in the lineage of Jesus. It consisted of one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, and one silver bowl of 70 shekels. Both of them were full of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering. Then you had one gold pan of 10 shekels full of incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one kid of the goats as a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of the peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs in their first year. Notice that all of the major sacrifices were offered except the trespass offering, which was only offered when restitution needed to be made. These offerings were also made of the people's free will, for God wants worship to come from the heart. In offering these sacrifices, a sweet aroma would be made to the Lord, and the Lord would be pleased with Israel. We'll continue with this, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Numbers chapter 7, verses 18 to 29, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.